No one is you and that is your power. You have the opportunity to do anything that you want to do. Mm. You might be doing the same thing that 10,000 people are doing, but no one is you. So you do it your way and the success and the happiness and the good energy will surround you. Before we jump into this episode, I'd love to invite you to join this Candid Spiritual community to hear more conversations that will help you become happier, healthier, and more healed. All I want you to do is click on that subscribe button because I love your support. I love seeing all the comments pouring through, all the love pouring through, and we're just getting started. I can't wait to go on this journey with you, whether you're a spiritual seeker or you're just curious about the topic. And we really hope that our conversations will provide you food for thought and inspiration for your own spiritual journey. So join us for honest, candid discussions about spirituality for soul's sake. For soul's sake, for soul's sake. Hello and welcome to another episode of For Soul's Sake, a conversation, a podcast in which I bring you the best in wellness, the best in health, the best in today, Pilates. Today we're joined by Ashley McKee, who is a professional certified classical Pilates instructor and an ex-professional dancer based in London, originally from Sydney, Australia. It's getting exotic people. <laughs> Passionate about health and wellness, she's dedicated her time to helping people feel their best physically and mentally through Pilates. She discovered the practice through rehabilitation from a severe back injury and realizing its benefits for both dance career and everyday life, she shares it with the world. Inspired by its transformative effects, she's decided to become an instructor to share Joseph Pilates' method with others. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Really Excited appreciate for this time. chat. Let's get stuck in all things Pilates. I've never been to a Pilates class, and I guess it's because, can I be honest with you? Sure. I don't have any male friends that are involved in Pilates. Do you have many male students to, that, that come along? Yeah, I have okay. quite a few. It's about 50-50, which is really Whoa, great. Oh, okay. Um, and I think more men need to do Pilates. So hopefully after this chat, you'll be booking into a session to, to try. If you see me there, encourage me. <laughs> yeah. But I think a lot of people forget that Pilates was invented by a man, Joseph Pilates. So he originally called his method Contrology, and then after he passed, it became Pilates. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just over time, a lot of people have just kind of thought, oh, it's, you know, it's just maybe just for women, or it's not for me, it's not something that people want to give a try because they might think that it's not relevant to them or it might not help them in a way that other sports might. Um, but when... You know, when they do get into it, there's endless benefits uh, from posture, mental benefits, core strength. The list goes on. It's it's really transformative. Yeah, break it down. I mean, break it down for me. Like, if I came to a class, what kind of things would... I've seen, like, images of, like, a table and ropes coming from the walls. Is that Pilates? Yes, it okay. is. But ropes? I maybe don't... not. <laughs> But, but I think you're talking about the Cadillac, so it's like... The Cadillac, okay, yes. that's what it's called. Yeah, okay, and cool. there's springs and different things hanging off. Yeah, so that's one part of it. Then there's also a reformer, which is definitely having its moment at the moment. The hype is definitely around reformer. What is that, um, So that's a little bit lower. Okay. It's like a bed um, and a carriage that moves out and in and the springs are underneath that's the carriage. That's what I've seen. That's what I've seen. That's probably what you've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the res resistance is coming from underneath and it's kind of that push and pull um, and having the support of all the other bits around the reformer. So you've got your straps, you've got your foot bar, um, boxes. It helps you to have a bit more support that you would on the mat. So mat is the foundations that's kind of where we want to start really good for beginners it should be harder on the mat but then we go to the reformer to kind of like i said have that extra support find that resistance build a bit more strength mm. so i guess they're the main two that a lot of people know about mat reformer but as i was saying before the cadillac um that's an amazing piece of equipment and to me, that really helps clients stretch a little bit more. So the springs are coming from above. You can do some hanging, which helps decompress the spine, um, or you can just do the mat work on it. So mm -hmm. there's so much to it. It's like a jungle gym when you go into a classical studio. Um, yeah. There's also chairs, barrels. I mean, the list goes on. So that usually happens in a private setting. Um, it's hard to have or find a group class where you can do all of it because, you know, in this day and age, we're kind of coming in and out of classes and sometimes... Yes, set up and for safety, it might just be better on the one piece of equipment. Mm. But if, you know, if people can get to a one to one session, I, I know it's not affordable for everyone, but um, it is it's a lot of fun mm. and you get addicted. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, we were speaking off camera about the let's go back to the men piece. Yes. We were speaking about 
there are a lot of celebrity men that are practicing Pilates, and you were mentioning some names. Hit me with some. Yeah, so Harry Styles, Ronaldo, um, LeBron James. So we, we could huge, be a good company. Yeah, so huge sports stars, huge celebrities. Um, they're doing it. It works for them. Ronaldo put something on his Instagram story the other day, and it just went crazy, went oh. viral. Obviously, everyone's resharing it. Um, and yeah, I hope it does encourage more men to try Pilates, seeing maybe someone that inspires them and might give them that push. Um, another conversation we're having off com camera is that men maybe go to more sports and team sports. Mm. Um, and maybe that's something that, yeah, they just need to step out of their comfort zone, try a class or there's no harm in bringing a mate with you mm. um, or practicing at home, you know, in the comfort of your own space. There's lots of online materials um, and it's a good place to start. Mm. Yeah. I mean, thinking about it, for me, a lot of my wellness and a lot of even my mental health ha happens on a weekly football pitch. Yeah. And or even in the barber chair, you know, talking to, to the person cutting your hair. And I feel that there is a lot of space or an opportunity that awaits us in the, in the years that follow in the next decade, perhaps, where men encourage the next generation. I think it comes from fathers encouraging their sons even. Mm -hmm. Because like for me personally, my dad's not really a sporty type. I think I remember him taking part in one uh, relay race at my sports day as a child. But apart from that, there wasn't really much involvement in sports like from that angle. And that kind of, I guess, it's, I wouldn't call it trauma, but I guess that generational, uh, we would call it in Sanskrit samskar, like an impression. That impression mm -hmm. has kind of continued onwards. And so I'm like trying my best to not, pass that on to my son like I've enrolled him on Sunday football classes and Saturday cricket and trying to get him involved and me being there present as opposed to being busy and working and um, I wonder if you had any any thoughts around uh, yeah just encouraging people to try Pilates have you have you had resistance from people and how do you overcome that yeah um I don't think I've had resistance from people which is a good thing but I think the hardest part is just starting like right. anything that we do you know just taking that first leap um so I think a few things having the support so having a friend or a parent someone to encourage you I think is a really good first step sometimes you need that other voice to give you that push um I also think finding uh whether it's a sports team or an instructor for going back to pilates mm. finding someone that you really resonate with and someone that you have a good connection with because they're going to put you at ease mm. um so if it's in a pilates setting just yeah finding a, an instructor that you might know already or heard good things from a friend um and yeah i mean like anything like i said it's really hard just stepping out of your comfort zone yeah. but once you do that's when amazing things can happen yeah so yeah, yeah. Yeah, just you made go a good for point it. there. You said like finding a, a good instructor, mm. and that's been a, a big part of like when I'm trying to find something to try for the first time. I'm looking for someone that really knows us. Mm. Would there be any red flags when it comes to finding a Pilates teacher that you think maybe you shouldn't engage with that? Like how? Okay, let's maybe go the positive route. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, oh, what can She's we? She's about to criticize, <laughs> <laughs> no. but if, if there's a, how would you ascertain whether someone's a good teacher? Like how would you know whether to invest in that person? So I think it's a few things. I think qualification over anything. You want someone that's actually done their training. They know their stuff. Um, that's going to keep you safe. And you're probably going to be taught very close exercises to what Joseph Pilates would have taught, which, you know, it's his method. So what he created is what we still see in a lot of classes now. And maybe people add variations and adapt it, which is great. Um, I think also the language people use, if it's positive words, mm. um, if it's the benefits that you personally want to get. So physical benefits, mental benefits, improving your posture. If you have a desk job and, you know, we're all hunched over. I'm, even as a Pilates instructor, I, you know, I sit like this a lot of the times. Mm. Um, so finding people that, yeah, use the right language. I'm getting really conscious yeah, now. I'm very conscious now. <laughs> um, but yeah, and not maybe someone that uses, in my eyes, maybe toxic words like, in 10 days, you'll lose this or you'll, you know, feel the burn or do that. I think these words can be a little bit negative and it might put pressure on people or they might be a little bit scared or think, oh, I can't do that. I can't reach those goals. But if it's a slower approach and an approach that's not just physical benefits, but mental benefits and benefits that can really help you in everyday life, not just when you're exercising, mm. I think that's the, that's the goal. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. To find, I, I love this piece about positive language. 
because mm-hmm. I remember even as a child, like learning piano for, for me, learning musical instruments, I needed to have teachers that were encouraging and, and you know, I, th- I mean, I always switched off when I was getting told off and, mm. you know, being roasted about, sometimes it's necessary, but, you know, I, I totally Being roasted by your teacher. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's part of, yeah. I guess, the education journey. Um, when it came to your personal choice of the practice of Pilates, you, you went through this period of having a severe injury mm-hmm. and then choosing Pilates as the way to kind of deal with that. And you, I, I don't know, are you still dealing with that injury? Is that is, did, did Pilates completely solve it? I would say it solved it, but it's definitely something that I need to upkeep. And if I was to stop Pilates, I think I'd be back in pain. Um, so I think this is this is actually really good to talk about because I was a bit hesitant to start Pilates. So it kind of goes back to what we were saying before, taking that first step. Um, and it was because I trusted someone, which was my physio and specialist at the time, that were like, you know, we can only do so much, I think, as a long-term thing. You need to try Pilates. And I was 18 at the time, and there wasn't much around Pilates at that point. You know, it's really having its moment now, which I love. But, yeah, back 10 years ago, I didn't really know much about it. Mm. So I, yeah, enrolled in a class, and it was a semi-private, and it was Reformer, Matt, and some of the other bits of apparatus that I was explaining at the beginning. And from the first 10 minutes, I was like, okay, I'm hooked. This is great. And, you know, I had a back injury, so I couldn't do much, but I was lying down, pressing myself out in the reformer using the resistance of the springs. And although I was very supported, my injury wasn't being aggravated. I was like, whoa, I'm actually moving again. My blood's flowing. I'm breathing. I just felt in such a positive state. And that's something that you don't really get when you have an injury, because I think a lot of the time we think you have to stop, you have to rest. But in some cases that can make it worse. So yeah, from that first class I had in my head, that I'm going to train to be an instructor one day. Wow. So, yeah, I just had to wait for the right time. And then I think it was like maybe four years after that, it was mm. like, let's go for it. Let's let's go all in. And I did go all in and I did a 600-hour course. I was like, I'm not just going to do a little bit. <laughs> I want to learn it all. And You're even, all or nothing kind of person. Yeah, no, I, I really am. Yeah. And, yeah, even if it wasn't for me to be a teacher, it was just for me to know more about the method because I was just hooked on, yeah how it really helped me and, and also how it made me feel. Mm. I also wanted to ask you about mm. the transition between your dance career, which seemed to have ended quite early, and transitioning to teaching. Because mm. I think some some of us, when we find our passion and we find something that we're really invested in and we love, mm. then transitioning away from that and doing something that's maybe you, you never... I mean, as a, as a child, could you imagine someone telling you you'd be... A, a Pilates instructor no. would that have been your dream in one sense and so I guess how did you navigate the mental space of I guess letting go of that dream in one sense with dancing was it was it yeah. a tragic thing in your life and how did you deal with that yeah so actually positively I was able to dance after that injury oh, nice. yeah I have now since had to let go um, but if we take it back to when I was 18 and and dealing with maybe never dancing again or even being as mobile as I was. You know, you think of also just like life moments, like Mm. maybe one day when I become a mum, like will I be able to lift and rotate? Like it was that bad. I was in a lot of pain. Um, And yeah, Pilates really helped me to heal. Then I got my first contract overseas at 19. um, A dancing contract. Dancing contract. Mm. And then from then, travelled around the world, doing all different things like cruise ships and magic shows and all different styles of dance, met incredible people. Um, but throughout that journey, there was injuries. So I always had Pilates and it, it kind of always had my back was always there for me. So I just kept it as part as my, a part of my routine. Um, and actually when I did the training, I had a ankle ligament tear. So I was just doing the anatomy side and the observing side. So yeah, it's been a journey, but, um, I think the point that I realized that I need to kind of think about something else was just before COVID, so kind of good timing. Um, and I was just getting general... So to that point you were dancing? Yeah, I was dancing, yeah. So wow. I was able to have a career with it, which Amazing. was incredible. Yeah, just, yeah, doing what I love. Um, obviously, it's it's a hard career. Sometimes you have work, sometimes you don't, and you put you push your body to the extremes. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, and maybe if I wasn't a dancer, I wouldn't love Pilates as much. But I mm. feel there's such a close link between the two and the passion and expression I got through dance I now get that through Pilates which is really nice um but yeah it was it was hard letting go but I think it's for the best and I kind of feel guilty saying that I don't really miss dancing but because I have Pilates it I don't know it gives me that expression that I need 
yeah. there's a kind of spiritual angle on this, which is like not being attached to the role which you're currently in. Mm -hmm. And in one sense, yes, we have to live with some sense of attachment if you're wanting to give your best output. Like you need to love what you do in order to teach it in, in the most authentic and the most passionate way. But at the same time, always having it in the mind that at any given time, anything can change. And that, that life is so much in flux and so fluid and always changing that we need to be ready that behind any corner could just be that moment of just recognizing my life is going to change. For me, it happened most recently when I became a father. Mm -hmm. My life and sharing had just started picking up and, you know, I'm, I'm sharing across the world, uh, flying different places, sharing mantra, sharing kirtan. And then I have kids and I want to be in that I want to be a good father. I want to be present for my children and recognizing that that change, it's not a negative thing. It's just that's the nature of life. Yeah. The only constant in life is change. And Yeah, yeah and I think something? it is a beautiful thing yeah. to adapt and to change. And although it might be scary, everything happens for a reason and it will always work out. You just have to kind of trust the process. Yeah. Trust but becoming a father is a big thing. It's a massive thing. Yeah. It's huge. And yeah. you have to, you know, give up your independence and... Be selfless and put someone else's needs in front of yours, which can be really hard, totally. especially being someone like us where we have our own thing, our business and we're traveling and things like that. It can be really hard because schedules overlap and at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. It's actually your child who comes before all of that or yeah. before work. So, yeah, like I said, mm. I think change is a good thing. Scary, yeah. but good. Scary, but good. Scary, but good. <laughs> when it came to changing your um, career and going into Pilates and then now teaching and I wanted to know what the process was for becoming someone that is, in my eyes anyway, a, a, a leader in, in Pilates. Someone, you're definitely recognized as being someone that's at the forefront of the practice. And so that transition, that change from being a practitioner to a teacher, mm -hmm. do you want to tell me a little bit about that and how someone, maybe in their life, may, may not be that they want to become a Pilates instructor, but per se, how would they go from being a student to being a teacher? And what does that what does that look like? Yeah, that's a really good question. I feel like there was a moment maybe three years into teaching where I thought I feel like I'm holding back on truly how I like to move or maybe, I don't know, sharing, sharing a bit more personally or having deeper relationships with clients in terms of deep and meaningful chats and helping them not just in the Pilates studio but maybe with an issue that they have going on in their life. So really just bringing people in that way. Um, but I think it's ultimately just being yourself. I know that sounds so easy to say and cliche, mm. but I think I was holding back and maybe being the teacher that I thought people wanted me to be, which I think there was just a bit of a wall there. Um, but when I just really let my personality and my self shine through, let people in, be open with other people, I think that's how it just kind of grew. And that was in the studio, but also online because you you have to be yourself online as well. That is key. Yeah. Um, and I the last thing I want is people to meet me in person or come to my class and, and then, see the difference and see, whoa, like I did not expect that. That's not who she, you know, I want it to really reflect me and just be myself and be authentic. Yeah. So I hope that can help some people with just feeling like maybe you feel a bit stuck. Maybe it's just taking a step back and then really thinking, all right, okay, what do I want to give out? What energy do I want to give to people? And, and then just go through that way. Yeah, for anyone that's watching that's perhaps a little younger and is trying to find their authentic self, mm -hmm. I mean, it seems clear you had to go through life experiences to bring that out of you. And you said you had to go through pushing through that resistance to, mm -hmm. do you feel like there's anything that you could give as a piece of advice, even looking down the barrel and just, you know, anything that you feel would help someone, say if you're talking to your younger self, yeah, imagine you're talking to a young Ashley. What would be your advice to that person to try and perhaps, it's not even speed up that process, but to help mm. that person to find their authentic self yeah. in, a, in an easier way or without going through life's experiences? Or do you think it's necessary? To just I've got patient? a really good quote that come to mind. Hit me up. I, I feel love like I've got some tears brewing. Here we go. It's a really simple quote. I don't know who it's by, but I say this to myself quite a lot, at least like once a month. Mm. So I would say, no one is you and that is your power. And I think it's just so simple but no one is you and you have the opportunity to do anything that you want to do. Mm. You might be doing the same thing that 10,000 people are doing, but no one is you. So you do it your way and the success and the happiness and the good energy will surround you. Mm.
powerful. Yeah. It's definitely powerful. <laughs> I have the tears brewing. I'm such an emotional person. <laughs> me too. So, Anyone that knows I just, me, I cry all the time. I so. cry all the time. It's, I don't find it embarrassing, but sometimes no. it's like, just you, you want them to stop. It's like yeah. you just want an off button. No, no, yeah. But I tend to cry more over happy things and positive things, like things like quotes like that. Mm. Um, yeah. But it's just, mm. maybe it just shows our sensitive side. It's, it's fine. good. I think it's, uh, soft hearts are necessary in the world. Yeah, for sure. Um, when it was your time for uh, change and, and entering into this world of Pilates, I mean, in one sense, I can understand if you were in the world of dance, I don't think you'd have any pushback about going into, see, like, I come from a traditional Indian family. And for me, it's doctor, lawyer, or failure. <laughs> You know, so, brutal. Yeah, it was quite brutal. And so I had to go through a whole route of going to university and doing banking and finance at, at, at that time. And then finding out that my real passion was in sharing this chanting with others and um, how to make that financially sustainable and so many, all, all these things. But for you, was it also, a, a, was there any pushback from your friends and family? Like, come on, like, are you sure you want to do this? Are you, you know, how did you navigate that if there was? Yeah, there were a few conversations around it. I think also because... I'd been dancing professionally from 16 and then training and then traveling the world. It seems just like, almost like a fake life with mm. just jumping here and doing amazing contracts and getting to see the world. Um, but there was also extremely down times. And I think that's when friends and family were like, you know, maybe you need to start thinking about something else, like having a bit, um, bit of something else behind you. And what if happens if you get injured again? All this kind of thing. So that was always in the back of my head, which I knew. And I guess when you're young, you're a bit stubborn. You're like, I won't get injured again or this won't happen. Yeah. I'm invincible. I'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, just having Pilates behind me was really reassuring. But again, it's a freelancer job, or most of the time it is, and it can be really hard, especially if um, there's not as much opportunities where you are. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think maybe there were times that people doubted me, but I just, I don't know, I just saw the end and I could see, well, not the end, but I saw where it could go. Wow. And I wanted to put my all into it. Mm. And I think when you do that, you can't really go wrong. If you're confident, it was you're 100%. at least trying. Yeah. Because you know what happens if we don't follow our dreams, we end up growing old and cold. Yeah. We just feel like, what if? You resent. You resent, yeah, that I wish I'd given my best in that. And I think I'd rather die having tried so and true. failed, but rather than never tried and, 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 you know, just said, no, it would never work. Yeah. It's, it's one thing that I'm so passionate about because, like, I'll meet, even for example, someone who's, I don't know, filming this podcast, a videographer who's sitting behind a camera, and he's thinking about whether to make this his full time thing. Yeah. And I'm all about trying to encourage people to just go for it. Because if it yeah. fails, then at least you said, oh, I gave it a shot. And yeah, gave this is what I learned from it. And this is what. I'd... Mm. But if we don't even try, then we can even go and just say, yeah, it was maybe, but oh, I don't know. Like, you know, just in, that insecurity shines forward. And so, yeah. Or we're influenced by friends and family in all aspects, but yeah. career. Yeah. Also, if a friend buys a home or a friend has a. A, starts a family and it all just that pressure but actually if you just think you know you're staying in your own lane you're on your own path you're on your own journey I think that's that's where amazing things can happen mm. and you don't want to have any regrets and if it doesn't work out then it's just not meant to be and you mm. know at least you tried did you not try um, being like a dance instructor or a teacher I did I really oh, didn't like it didn't like it no <laughs> no because I was teaching young kids as well and oh, it, it, I see. to me it was a bit more like just babysitting just like looking after kids for an hour um but it, i mean i still obviously learned really valuable skills being a, still a teacher um and it was fun but it just didn't give me the feeling that pilates does where that's really actually changing people's lives mm. so people come to me after surgery you know they think they're not they're not going to be mobile again um cancer patients want to yeah. give them hope that's and powerful. all different ages all that's different powerful. yeah it's amazing and i just think it's the most inclusive form of exercise there's so many adaptions modifications different You're pieces of apparatus yeah it. i don't mean to just oversell <laughs> but it's just I, I can just rant i can just talk not rant yeah. i can just talk about pilates all day long i'm thinking um, what would be the reason that i would come let me just be candid let me think about it yeah so I would come because, yeah, I've got posture issues and I've also, I don't have any pain in the body per se, but I do recognize I'm getting older. I'm 33 now. And still young. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. I don't want it to get to the point where I need to do it. I'd like to try it before I need to. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to come to a class. 
Yeah, versus commit I to think you should. Mm. Well, now being a father, you want to be able to be showing up to your... Is it your son, did you say? Yeah. I've got a son and daughter. Oh, son and daughter. Yeah, yeah. You want to be showing up to their, whether that be sporting events or a school play or whatever mm -hmm. it is, and you want to be there, you want to be mobile, you want Definitely. to feel your best. Definitely. And you want to sit taller, mm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, do, I feel like in the next couple of years, everyone's just going to start to hunt even more, just with our phones. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Have you seen one of those things online and it's kind of like the evolution of humans and then like the last one is like everyone's a hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can see it happening. Yeah. I can see it happening. Um, Lots of neck you know, this, I don't, what do you call it? Yeah. yeah, we're just so forward. It's mm. just like we're getting out of alignment. So, yeah, mm. I think you would really like it. What's the future of Pilates look like to you? Because I'm always asking wellness teachers, yoga teachers, uh, any anyone that's to do with health and wellness, I'm always asking, what does it look like 10, 15, 20 years from now? Do you see the apparatus changing? Do you see there being a change in style? What What's kind of like trending right now in, in that particular practice? Yeah. Mm, that's a really good question. What would you like to see the future look like? That's maybe a better one. I'd like to see Pilates being a lot more inclusive for people and accessible for people. Um, inclusive meaning like different types of people coming? Yeah, and feeling like they can. Right. And having options available that are more affordable. Um, oh, it's quite a pricey practice. It is quite pricey and people that... Book what, into what's classes. A, what's the practice know. normally? On average, in London, I'd say thirty-five pounds a class okay. for a single class. Um, that's reformer or mat. If you're doing one-to-one -one sessions, it can be seventy pounds up to that's one to one. One hundred and fifty, yeah, which is one-to-one -one prices, and that's when you get to use all the apparatus. Um, but you know, if you want to implement it as a consistent routine, thirty-five pounds four times a week is is you know it adds up, especially in London. Everything's week, expensive. Yeah. You travel to the classes and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm seeing lots of online, there's free materials on YouTube, but you have to make sure it's obviously the right instructor and someone that's qualified. Um, a lot of people have apps now, myself included, so you can practice at home. Um, and then I think just popping studios up, just having them pop up in in each suburb would be would be amazing. Would that be something you that you want? Yeah, suburb, yeah. We say suburb in Sydney. Yeah. We say suburb. Um, which there's one coming on my street, which I'm very excited Ooh. about. Um, but yeah, I think just, yeah, more accessible. I'd love to see that. There's Is that definitely... something you'd like to do? Like have your own places? I would love to have really? a studio. Yeah. But because I'm an all or nothing person, I have to <laughs> wait to the right time because I want it to Fair be enough. everything. You know, it'd be great just even having a space to do mat work. But because I have all that behind me, I want yeah, to make sure it it's, you know, it's a whole thing. Um, and ideally all around the world as well. Mm. So obviously London, Sydney, I'm from there. My partner's half French, so Paris would be amazing. Mm. So I'm dreaming big. Um, so I guess that's the future in my eyes, having, having some studios. Um, and there are lots of different trends that come and go. Um, and I think people just need to find what they like. I'm super open to, you know, there's obviously classical and there's more contemporary and then there's also more fitness <coughs> Pilates. But as long as the person going is enjoying it, that's the main thing. And as long as they're safe and the instructor's trained, um, each to their own. Accessible, relevant in every town and village. Yeah. That would be quite cool. The whole world the whole be doing world. Pilates. Mm. <laughs> Do you think there's a way in which people can practice from home? Like, are there online instructional videos, anything that you're doing perhaps that people can watch or like say if, if someone just wants to try out, have a little taste of what, what would be that first step for them? Yeah, so pretty much all they need is a mat and themselves, oh. like a good mat at home. It's really easy to get, super affordable as well. Um, and just starting online. So for me, I have an app and I have beginner programs intermediate advanced i also have stretch videos because i know a lot of people just love doing stretch and mm. coming from a dance background obviously you need to stretch so i have lots of um nice videos on that um and then if people want to take it to the next level then you can get a few small equipment like a magic circle which is a ring a resistance ring i don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard of it or no i've not it. heard it but <laughs> no i'll check it out yeah and then obviously light weights or pilates ball there's lots of different props and that just helps to elevate the um, the workouts will just make you feel it a little bit more or just just to change it up because mm. you never want to be bored with workouts that's what, I think that's when people quit you have to always have that next thing to look forward to or the next challenge yeah I was doing really well there was this app called seven minute workout oh, I've and heard of that yeah it's it's really good I mean I did it for about three or four months every single day for four months 
and it was really good. I felt like you know much. It was it was quick, easy access and whatnot. And it's exactly what you said. Even though there was a variety on that, I just got mm -hmm. bored of it. And yeah. I think that, that you need the challenge. I need a challenge. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's what I need. It's team sports. I really enjoy. Like I enjoy like being on a football pitch with my friends. Um, but also I, I like something that's challenging and something that's totally different that no one else is doing. That's why I'm like super intrigued. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try a Pilates class. Yeah, and I mean, 10, 20 minutes, there's options for that. If you wanted to do, you know, a little bit longer, then you can do double sessions or you can pick a longer one. Mm. Or even just implementing a walk in with Pilates, that's super beneficial. Or you do your football um, match or training and then you come back and you pop on a stretch video. Oh, so yeah. you can implement it that way and it can really just enhance different parts so that aids with your recovery you know Amazing. maybe it was a tough game and the other team were really rough and you got kicked in the shin I'm just thinking about my partner who comes back every Tuesday and he's like oh this happened and I twisted my ankle yeah. get the frozen peas out that kind of thing and elevate the leg yeah. let's do Pilates tomorrow. I mean I have to be honest I haven't played football in a while because I played one game I think Kaylee, who's behind the camera he was playing with me and one guy went in with a slide tackle and uh, it's popped my ankle oh, no. and even now when I roll it it still clicks click crack yeah. yeah i don't know what what that's what, what that is maybe I, check it out oh, okay did I you get diagnosed there yeah okay <laughs> not diagnosed but the treatment plan yeah. did you like ice it or elevate i iced it and elevated it and okay. we had this um big festival like two days later and i had to sit really awkwardly on the stage oh. it was really bad but yeah since then i kind of put it off so maybe i do need to sort that out yeah even though i can feel it clicking. will help you and then just have a bit of a plan to mm. keep it moving but yeah i mean what's the point but I mean, it is fun, yeah, yeah. like seeing your mates and it's, you know, it's all about that as well, like the yeah, community so. of it. So, you know, online you can get that in live classes and then in-person classes, I think, I don't know, everyone's always really lovely when I go to classes because I'm just as much of a student than a teacher. Mm. I love going to classes and I often just chat to people, get to know people, exchange numbers, get a coffee and it just, it's just so nice connection. because connection and I think... You know, people are in the same room for a reason. You're there at that I same agree. time of the same day. You're meant to cross paths, so why not? You must have similar lifestyles. Yeah, you mm. can't force it. And that's why I love putting on events similar to what you do, because it just brings people together. A lot of people just book a ticket by themselves, which makes me so happy, because again, stepping out of the comfort zone, coming, meeting new people, connecting, moving. Like, you can't not feel great after that. Mm. You know, inspired, motivated, positive, um, just taking, you know, taking a break from the crazy, mm. wild outside world. I mean, the London definitely is. Yeah, definitely. It's it the wild is, west. Yeah. I was in Sydney for a month and although I wasn't working that much, I was just so calm. Mm. And then I come back here, it's like, okay, heart rate's up. We're back on. Even yeah. if I don't have anywhere to go, I'm yeah, rushing. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. Power New, walk. It's almost like the atmosphere makes you feel like you need to be doing something. I think that's what it is. Yeah. New York's the even pressure. more amped like that. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, New York, literally, I just get off the plane. I feel like if I'm not doing something, I'm a lazy sod. Yeah. You know, it's just, Which it's, is not a nice no, feeling to have. No. Sometimes it's good to have a bit of a yeah. push. If you have people that are doing amazing things around you, that's mm. great. But yeah, you can obviously take it that one step too far and then burnout happens. So mm. just finding the balance, I think, is key. Ashley, I want to talk about something spiritual. Mm -hmm. What's your views on spirituality? Do you have a belief in a higher power? Do you connect with that? Do you have a practice of sort? Tell me something. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say I'm quite a spiritual person. I think through people and connections, I feel really connected. Mm. And I myself use the tool of manifesting mm. a lot, and I swear by it. So I think a lot of the visualization that manifesting gives you or can give you is is key you know visualizing what you want in life where you want to be and the person you want to be I think can really help you and it's it just it's not a blocker it allows you to open up to to be that person wow. and that could be sitting with yourself and thinking about those things or you could tell someone about those things you can write it on a piece of paper there was one point I was putting sticky notes up around my room with just different things I want to do or Dreams. a person I want to be or keywords yeah. it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be one of those beautiful mood boards that you see I've always wanted to create one of those oh, really? mood board <laughs> what are they called like I think uh, it's a mood board mood yeah, board yeah but it just was like, oh it's a bit of effort but if you you know it just can be a sticky note or just mm. rip a of the end of a bill up and write down, you know, and stick I'm notorious it, for that. Like I've know? got pieces of paper all over my desk, ideas and visions and projects and things that I'd yeah. love to do in the future. Yeah. Yeah. A bit chaotic, but you know, you know, the vision, you can yeah. see it. 
why not? So yeah, I sometimes think... it would just click as well. Like I'll just be like doing something random, and I have a conversation with someone, and I just go, oh, 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 and I just find it. And just, it's here. It's I've got here. the idea. Yes, there it is. Yeah. yeah, I think that really helps, and it just helps you get it out of here onto paper, write it mm. down, and and then just trusting the process. You know, not everything's going to go your way. You have to just keep going, keep taking that step forward. Um, and just know that everything in life happens for a reason. Again, and a bit of a cliche quote again, but it's so true. Mm. You know, people might be listening to this thinking, oh, that's so true because, you know, I didn't get that job two years ago, but now I'm in a job that I love. Or, you know, that friendship or relationship ended, but actually, yeah, they were a toxic person. They were bringing me down. So there's always a reason. At the yeah. time, it might feel horrible, but you just got to yeah. trust in the universe. Yeah, His Holiness Steve Jobs once mm. said. Um, you can never connect the dots going forwards, but you can always connect them going backwards. Mm. So in retrospect, when you look back on something, you're like, oh my God, it made so much sense why that happened like that. But mm. when you're trying to connect the dots in the present moment, you're like, why? What's going on? Why is this happening to me? And I think that there's a beautiful uh, change in perspective. Instead of going, why is this happening to me? To just try and go, what is this trying to teach me? And I think that that one mental shift, that one just consciousness shift, it can help us to live a more fulfilled, happy, peaceful, etc. life. I love um, that. Yeah, just don't worry about why things are happening to you all the time. Uh, even if you're, you know, you're striving for goodness, you're trying to help people, be charitable, and you're trying to serve people, and you're trying to uplift people, but it's not going the way you dreamed. That's okay. Just think, not one day this will be a great story. One day, in retrospect, this will have taught me something. And even right now, let me think about what the lesson is rather than thinking, why, why, why is this happening to me? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. There's another little quote that comes to mind, or maybe it's just a saying. Me and you love quotes. But I know, right? I'm into it. I've got a list now, yeah. just so I can see them yeah. filtering through. Yeah. Um, and I feel like maybe my dad told me this once. But if it doesn't, if it won't matter in five years' time, it doesn't matter now. And I often have to say that to myself because I can get quite worked up and overthink things or why did I say that or why did that happen? But then I just stop and I think, okay, in five years' time, will this change my life? Wow. Is this going to impact me that far down the track? And then I'm like, nope, okay, wow. cool. And most of the things don't. I mean, a lot of big things probably will. But a lot of the time, actually, wipe it to the side, move forward and just let it go. Mm. Yeah. Any other quotes you can think of? I mean, one did come to mind, but I don't know if it's relevant. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just, I love this principle of stopping and pausing when something happens in life as opposed to reacting to it all the time. Mm -hmm. And what you're speaking about, like, if it doesn't matter now, then, I mean, it doesn't matter in five years and it doesn't matter now. Yeah. Then it also made me think about how, like, sometimes we're just so used to being reacting to things. So everyone has to have an opinion on something right now. Like something happens in the news, you need to respond and react to it right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that oftentimes it would be better if we just went and, and said, let's just pause on this and reflect and think about it. Like there's a quote that goes, uh, a moment of patience and a moment of anger can save us a thousand moments of regret. Yeah. And I think that oftentimes if we can just pause on a moment of decision making, pause on a moment of reaction, pause on a moment of, you know, just stepping in and saying something and rather just taking the time to, it's almost like an emotional traffic, like red, amber, green, pause, <laughs> reflect on it and then act on something. Then there's more likely a chance that we're going to learn something from that activity, from that experience. And That's a good analogy. Yeah. You should you should claim that. I'll, I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. No, I got it from somewhere Red, amber, green. Oh, <laughs> right. But it is, yeah, that's a really good way to think about yeah. it. And you're right. You don't want to act out in the moment and then have regrets. I don't know how we got into this. I don't know. But yeah. it's quite nice. <laughs> I really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks it's so much, great. Ashley. I really appreciate it. Can we do a little quick fire round? Are you, yeah, in, sure. are you into quick fire? Yeah, I heard. You're not nervous, no? I'm not nervous, but I did listen to a few of them on oh, the, the, the other podcasts. She's been thinking about like, them. She's what, cheating. What am I going to get fired she's with? She's cheating. Yeah. All right, let me pull them up. You ready? I'm ready. All right, question number one. What's something that you're curious about right now in your life? Hmm. I'm curious about my future. I'm, in saying that, I'm excited about my future. But I am quite curious to see how things will pan out. Being on the other side of the world, away from my family and friends, mm. 
recently engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Small business owner. You know, I just am curious to see where the journey is going to take me. Wow. So we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> well, just my little interaction with you, you're a positive outlook person. You're someone that's really trying their best. And so I just wish you all the best. I oh, hope, it, thank hope you. the future is very abundant and very joyful. Um, question number two, what's something that you're personally working through at the moment? Mm. At the moment, a bit of guilt. And that also links to being away from family. Mm. I just spent some time there and I always feel a sense of guilt when I come back because I'm leaving a lot behind. Uh, I feel I'm not there for people physically and there's only so much you can do through a phone and with different time zones. So that's something that I've been going through definitely in the last two weeks. So that's why that one sprung to mind. And it is, yeah, a bit of, it's not a nice feeling. It's, you know, am I doing the right thing? I'm being a little bit selfish by being away. I'm chasing a dream, but I might be letting other people down. Mm. So I'm just trying to work through how I can, you know, overcome that or, or still be there for people from a distance. Mm. Well, it's worth, I hope it works itself out. Yeah. <laughs> Question number three, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Hmm. Can I use the same quote about no one is you and that's your power? I think that's just the best thing that I've ever heard. Mm. And I really just implement it in so many different things because, you know, we're here for a reason. Most of the time we... We only have ourselves, and I think it's just knowing your power, knowing your worth, and you can put your self to what you can, what you put your mind to, you can achieve. Um, so yeah, hope Incredible. it's okay to reuse, but yeah, I just love that. I just, Incredible. and I hope it can help other people as well. Thank you. And number four, what's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? Worst piece of advice? Well, probably put yourself first. I think a lot of the time that could be the case, but sometimes you do have to be a bit selfish, so, sorry, <laughs> a bit selfless. Mm. Sometimes people need you more, whether that be in yeah relationships or um, just helping another person out. So sometimes you just have to kind of take a step back, help others before you help yourself. Um, but I do feel like a lot of people say that, and I think it can create a bit of nastiness if yeah. you're just fully selfish yeah to be selfless is actually quite powerful as well mm. this is one uh, saying that i, I try to live by because i think it's so powerful humility doesn't mean to think less of yourself mm. humility means to think about yourself less mm. you know we yeah. sometimes are so consumed with me 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 my 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 self 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 that we forget that there's such a beauty in giving, in loving, in sharing, in in earning, in getting things, we make a living. Yeah. But in giving and sharing and serving, we make a life. And I think there's just so much that we can, that can be said about the selflessness piece that, um, yeah, I just that would be my prayer for the world, that if we could just take more time to be a little more selfless. Yeah. And you get um, such more in return yeah, by yeah, making yeah. other people feel great. Yeah, for sure. You feel good. You get that sense of achievement and for sure. you've helped someone. It feels amazing. Definitely. So if we can all experience that and just be a little bit selfless, I think you're right. I think a lot more positivity will come in the world. Mm. And last one, if you could create one law that everyone in the world had to follow, what would it be? Everyone has to try Pilates <laughs> at least once, <laughs> including you. Oh, man. All Even right. if it's 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. That's the law. Okay. Everyone law. must try Pilates. And if it's not for you, then I don't know if I'm fine. voting you in for Prime Minister just yet, but yeah, okay. I'll give it a go. Give it a go. Thanks. So Let much. me know how you find it, but I'm sure you'll love it. I will. I'm pretty sure. Thank you so much for this. I really appreciate your time, your energy, and for bringing your, yeah, your good spirit to this conversation. I feel like you're someone that's very joyful and naturally so and very positive in your outlook of life. And um, yeah, wishing you all the best and all success going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of For Soul's Sake. Drop us a comment. Are you going to go to Pilates class? Be honest. Don't lie. It's a kind of conversation. I'd love to see you at one. Uh, if you are, then let me know where you're going. Maybe I'll join you. Maybe we'll go to Ashley's together. Shall we go to a class of Ashley's? Um, 
let us know what you thought of the episode. I feel that you should feel complete permission to listen to this conversation more than once. You know, if you feel there was something valuable there, then for sure, listen to it again. And I'll see you on the next episode for soul's sake. I love you all so, so much. See you soon. Namaste. Hello. If you love this episode, you'll love my interview with Mimi Icon on mindfulness to manifestation. Check it out. So I had this panic attack and I thought I was dying. So I go to my teacher and I'm like, I think I'm having a heart attack. Like, I'm so scared. And he's like, well, if you do, we'll call 911. This is back in Toronto. I was living in Toronto at the time. He's like, Mimi, you cannot run away from yourself. It's a panic attack, most likely. Like, now go back into meditation and sit through it and watch it. Any emotional reaction is like a storm. Like, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. 